All right, so I just wanted to make a uh, quick video here installing some more memory in my computer. All right, it's been running pretty well, but I think usually having more memory in a computer, they usually like that. So let's put that in there and see if it maybe runs a little bit faster for video editing. So let's see what we have now. To see that, we'll go to My Computer, click Properties. All right, installed memory, 16 gigabytes. We're putting another 16 gigabytes in it. So let's get started. So first let's turn this off. All right, I have it in this closet here to make it quieter. All right, so before working on it, let's just unplug the... Actually, we can just turn that off. All right, so the power supply is off. I'm not going to make a big deal out of this. All right, so here's the uh, memory right here. So we've used... I got two of the four spots mo used. So whenever working on a computer, you want to keep yourself uh, grounded to the chassis. Chassis that way, you know, to prevent uh, static electricity from building up. All right, so this only plugs in one way. It looks like it's this way. All right, it's in there. Let's uh, turn it on and see if it works. That's pretty cool. It lights up. All right, I'm sure that's working fine. I'll just put this cover back on. You want to have these on because it's uh, the air doesn't flow properly through the case without them and cool it down. All right, that went very easily. All right, so let's uh, go to my computer and see if it's working. Properties. All right, well, here it is here. Installed memory, 32 gigabytes. Well, that's good. I had uh, 16 before, so that's working. Well, that was pretty easy, so um, that's good. Hopefully this should run a little better. So I'm still using GoPro Studio to edit everything, and that's been working pretty well. And if anyone's curious how to record like your screen, uh, this program here, OBS Studio. All right, so now I'm going to be installing this M.2 drive. So what this is, this shows up as like a hard drive but it's um, faster than a regular solid state drive and considerably faster than a traditional spinny hard drive. And it plugs in. All right, and it plugs in in that spot right there. I got it. All right, let's turn it on. All 
All right, so that new thing, that should just show up as a hard drive. So I don't see it here. All right, this is how you do it. Um, all right, that's this one here. Okay, so we just could do make new volume. Next, next, next. And there we go. All right, new. Oh, yeah, I don't want to call it new volume. Hang on. Um, properties. All right, let's call that M.2 drive. Yeah. All right, and there it is. So the uh, point with this that is supposed to be extremely fast. So now when I'm editing videos, I can work off of that drive, and then when I'm done with a video project, I can just store it on one of these, uh, you know, like a traditional hard drive, even just USB ones. All right, great. That went well. All right, one more thing I want to add here is the solid-state hard drive. So this is similar to the last thing I added, but it's a little bit slower, but still, you know, very fast. And it's uh, got twice the amount of storage on it. Alright, so as far as hooking it up, this thing here, that's for power. And this is for the data. So that's called a SATA connector. Alright, so that plugs in like that. So my power supply, it's most of the plugs on the thing are the old style. Like this, that's like what old drives used to use. That four pin connector. So I have a few more of the new ones. But it doesn't quite reach where I want to get. You know, I'm just going to pull it off this CD-ROM drive right there. I'm never going to use that. And I, extension cords are available. This drive can go right here. You know, this connector just, it plugs in, but it just, it pulls right out like nothing. I'm just going to use this one off the CD-ROM drive. All right, that's fine. I mean, CD-ROM drives by 2018 are pretty much completely obsolete. All right, let's uh, turn it on. Oh, that's not, I've never seen that one before. Maybe it's just upset about that missing CD-ROM drive. All right, it's on. And now I go Windows R. Okay, so here's our new disk right here. All right, so let's create a new volume next. And it says formatting right here. All right, and there it is. All right, well, that was easy. So now this drive, I can use this between that drive and this M2 drive. I'll use them for editing and then for storage, you know, just use like a regular hard drive. Okay, and to plug my CD-ROM drive back in, I have another SATA cable, a good one, and I'll order this. All right, that's all done. Okay, so here I am editing this video. So I'm still using GoPro Studio. I was thinking about making a video over the winter on how to use this software. So the way I'm using that new drive now. So the way it works is when you 
the files off the camera, they come out as an MP4 format. I've been recording everything in 4K, which is 3840 times 2160, 30 frames a second. And then to edit, this program converts everything to AVI files, which I think it's a lot easier for the computer to work with them. Now, the file sizes of the AVI files are huge, but it's, it's okay. You don't need to keep them, so you can erase them once you're done on a video editing project and then still keep the raw files and then you can even save your video editing project so if you ever wanted to re-edit it for some reason you can just reconvert everything and make sure you know don't rename stuff so it has the same file names and then open it back up and you can pick your work right back up again even after erasing all these converted files so here I am using that new drive right here so the, the directory I'm using, you know, I just put solid state conversion. And here's that M2 drive. I've been using that. But now what I'll do is when I finish filming, I'll put everything on this solid state drive. That's got four gigs. Then convert it to this M2 drive, finish it, and then I can store it on, like this is just a traditional hard drive here. And they're a lot cheaper for just archiving stuff. And I can just use uh, regular USB ones too, and then just write on them what it is. All right, so I'm gonna finish up editing this. Let's go talk about all my old computers. And this is how you record your screen, by the way, in your audio with this program, OBS Studio. All right, so those upgrade parts I put in my other computer are working well. The memory sped it up a little bit. The biggest improvement was those solid state drives. Now, whenever I'm editing a video project, I will have the files I'm working with on the solid state drives, and the video editing software runs a lot smoother and faster. So that was definitely worth doing. And then once I'm finished with a video editing project, I can store the files on the much cheaper traditional hard drives. All right, so I'm out here today. Um, to talk about every computer I've ever had and since I don't ever throw stuff away I have computers back my first computer back from when I was about six years old So let's start on that end on my first one All right, this here is the first computer I ever had experience running. This is something my dad brought brand new in 1991 I would have been about six years old at the time So as far as the stuff I did on this computer, I probably mostly just used it for games this computer ran Win Microsoft DOS and it had Windows 3.1 on it. I probably mostly just used DOS because I knew what I had to type in to get my games to play. So I still have a lot of the games. Um, at the time when you bought software, it would it would come on these discs, the three and a half inch floppies. Now also this computer had a five and a quarter inch floppy, but at the time. You know, in the early 90s, that was pretty much being phased out. So you can see, here's a piece of software you'd buy at the time. And it, what, you know, it was very common for that software to have both types of discs. So there, this, this, so there it is on a three and a half. And then here it is on a five and a quarter. You can see the difference in the disc size. Um, but this was an improved disk over this one. I think it held about twice the data. These held 1.3 megabytes. I think these were like half a megabyte or something. And that and it went in that drive like that. And these were that's where the name floppy disk came from because these disks, you know, bend like paper. A lot of these discs were like demo discs where they were free, like the first the first quarter of a game or something would be free, and then if you wanted to play the rest of the game, you'd pay for the rest of it. So this was like, you know, here's Doom on like a demo disc, and then if you wanted to finish the game, you would buy it, you know, the box, and it would have the rest of the game on it. So the games here that I remember that were really great, you know, Wolfenstein, this was pretty much the first walk around and shoot monsters game 
it was pretty neat, especially being the first game. Then, a little bit later, Doom came out. And Doom was like Wolfenstein, but they really got everything right about this game. Just the speed of the gameplay, the way it looked. Um, you know, Doom is kind of credited for the first walk around shoot monsters game, and it's really one of the best. It's still an awesome game. So there, you know, there it is, original Doom 1 and 2. Um, you know, that was a cool game. That was kind of neat. This game here, Lemmings. This was a very addicting game. Um, and, and that thing there, they're right. My dad was like addicted to this game for a while. Couldn't stop playing it. You know, it's a puzzle game, but it will make you crazy because it's like never ending and it just gets continuously gets harder. And then there's some like educational games like that. You know, that's a game, but they kind of made it like, you know, learning. Um, kind of walking around shooting monsters was a little bit more fun. So let's talk some of the specs about this computer. Because that's kind of how we're going to compare all the computers here. So this in 1991 was like $3,000. It was a 386 processor running at 25 megahertz. It had, a, I think, a 100 megabyte hard drive. It may have been 80. Running DOS and Windows 3.1. So, all right, so we're gonna be talking about like the units of measurement for speed and storage here, and we're gonna refer back to this. But as far as storage, so this computer had a hundred megabyte hard drive. So now, when you go to buy a hard drive, you'd be looking at terabytes, like a big hard drive. Now you can get like an eight terabyte hard drive. One million megabytes make a terabyte. So, for example, this computer. About maybe 90 of these disks would be how much storage this computer had in total. And it really wasn't enough. And at the time, that was what was available. That was the best thing. And for the time, that was great because before this, you know, like a 286 or something had a lot less storage. You know, we look, here's the catalog. For example, here's an old advertisement for a Dell. So there's a Dell 486. And it had four megabytes of RAM, 200, so this must have been, okay, so this is 1992. This magazine is a little bit newer than this computer. Because for at this time, you could buy a 50 megahertz 486 with four megabytes of RAM, 230 megabyte hard drive, more than double what this had. There's the price right there for three grand. You know, that's, and that's pretty much what a good computer costs. Even today, you know, three grand will get you a nice computer. Um, you know, but here's some more, some more ads. For example, there's an ad for a hard drive. Um, you know, now they're advertising a hundred megabyte hard drive right there. So another thing that really shows how computer storage has improved tremendously. Um, you know, here's 1.3 megabytes, 700 megabytes. Today, the storage that I'm using in my cameras, right there. This little tiny card the size of my fingernail is 128 gigabytes. That's 128 gigabytes is 128,000 megabytes. Over 100,000 times more storage in this disc right here. And more than 180 times the storage of this disc right here. And this little card here. That's not even the biggest one available. Currently in 2018, the biggest one of these you can get is a 512 gigabyte, which, I mean, that's just, that's enormous. But then, you know, the recording in 4K, you know, 128 gigabytes sound huge, but 4K, that's only like four hours of footage. So the other thing about this computer is we were always kind of upgrading it. Um, it started out with a 386 25 megahertz processor, and then I remember a 486 came out, and we bought a 486 chip and put it in there, and I did notice a big difference with that. The 486, like for example, Doom, in some situations, the 386 would really bog down and slow down. The 486 was a lot faster, so there's an example of what the processor looked like, and it, it even... And even when buying that new processor, they even, I remember the old sticker that said Zeos 386 is still under that 486 sticker. So, then once a bunch of years went by, you know, we were still running this computer for a while, then CD-ROM drives came out. 
Okay, so then when CD-ROM drives came out, that was a really a big deal at the time because a CD could hold a lot of data. A CD could hold about 700 megabytes, about seven times what this computer could hold. I remember getting like encyclopedia programs where it had like so much information on one of these disks. It was amazing. Okay, so then we kept that computer around probably longer than we should have and it got old. And then in 1997, we bought this. This at the time was about another $3,000 computer. So it was pretty, uh, you know, it was another pretty high-end computer. And comparing this to the Zeos, this was a big improvement over this. So this had Windows 98 on it, which was, I mean, even Windows 95 was a huge improvement over Windows 3.1 that this had. And, but this, we got it right when Windows 98 came out. It was like 1997 and as far as the specs on this to compare them so they're both about the same amount of money but as far as speed wise the zeos was 25 megahertz and you know then later upgraded to 50 megahertz this dell was 450 megahertz had 128 megabytes of ram where i think that only had four megabytes this had a 100 megabyte hard drive the dell had 19 gigabytes so if you look at our data powers of 10 you see there is one gigabyte is a thousand megabytes. You know, this computer had 190 times more storage than this one. Um, the other thing that this one came with, this came with a DVD-ROM. And that was cool because DVD could hold even more storage than a CD. Enough to fit, you know, a whole movie on it or just as far as data, it could hold a lot more data. So this computer here, and then a few more, then maybe a year or two went by, and then CD writers were available. So we bought this CD writer, and that was really cool, because then you could write to anything to a blank CD. Files, you could copy disks. It was really cool, because, again, these CDs for the time, this was a lot of storage, especially being able to write to it. So, you know, this is an example of a writable disc, and then they had these, re the, you know, RW, that was a rewritable. So this one you could use more than once. So then about two more years went by, and I got this for Christmas one year. And I have some, here's some old photos of me opening it up for Christmas. You know, the specs on it were kind of similar to that. This was a kind of a cheap computer. It was only 800 bucks. As far as specs goes, you know, this was 433 megahertz compared to the 450 of that Dell. This only had a six gigabyte hard drive and 64 gram, which was half of what that had. But Windows 98, 64 gig worked. It was okay. And this was really cool because then I had a computer in my bedroom, which was just you know, it wasn't like a shared family computer. It was my computer. Um, the other thing that's cool, but some people may be looking at this thinking this is a Mac. This is not a Mac. This is a Windows machine. This is made by eMachines. And at the time, Macintosh came out with a computer that just looked, that looked just like this. And they advertised it heavily with its, it's all in one design. Plus it's, you know, they came in a bunch of different fancy colors like this. And then this company went and copied them and... <laughs> And they they got in a fight over that. There's articles and stuff online, but it's like they sold these for a little while, but then like they weren't allowed to sell them anymore and had to pay Apple some money for completely ripping off their design. So these are sort of a collector's item, um, and they're kind of rare. But you know, I used one as my personal computer for years. So as far as this computer, things I would do on it. Um, at the time, I was probably in junior high school, so I was using it for schoolwork a lot. We had dial-up internet. This was my first computer with internet. Actually, that one was too. Um, the dial-up internet was pretty much too slow. It was so slow. It wasn't really usable. I mean, it worked, but it was it, it sucked. The other cool thing with this, then once we had two computers in the house, so this computer here had, had a built-in network card, and that was really cool because... You know, it uses this type of wire here. This is uh, called Category 5 cable, and this is an RJ45 connector, and it's used for computer networking. So at the time, we made a crossover cable, which is one of these cables just wired, so you could plug each computer right into each other without needing a router or, um, or hub or anything. 
or a switch. And then we had a network built in the house. And that was so cool because with the network, you could share files, you could share a printer, you could play these, a lot of these games were network games. So that was really cool. You know, that computer didn't come with a network card. We had to add it. But it was, you know, they just, it was expandable. It wasn't a big deal. Some of the downfalls with having an all-in-one machine like this, you couldn't, re like this computer here, it was very upgradable. You could take it apart, add stuff to it, and, and, and change stuff around. This one here, you really couldn't do that. Like, it, these weren't really user serviceable, so you couldn't add stuff. It did have one of those laptop expansion slots on it, um, so you could plug that in. Um, the other thing, both these computers, you know, these were the first computers with USB. You know, that old, that first computer didn't have it. So when you went to plug in accessories and stuff, it would either be a serial or a parallel cable. And they were hard to get working. You know, people don't realize how great USB is because you can get power from it. And when you plug stuff in with USB, it generally just works, which is not, you know, that's what it stands for, universal, key, key thing. So like Windows 98 at first didn't really support it. I think they kind of added it in in Service Pack 1 or 2. Um, so it, it did work, but it was like they kind of crope like Windows 95 didn't really support USB. And, and that was a big improvement to computers. So the other thing, this only had that 6 gigabyte hard drive. That wasn't really big enough. I bought this external 20 gigabyte drive and pretty much worked off of this the whole time. That between having 20 gigs and 6 gigs, that was enough storage. Um, this was also my first time getting a laser mouse. Um, instead of having like a, a so you can see on the, on the older Zeos computer it used like a ball type mouse the laser mouse was a huge improvement over the ball mouse it just worked a lot better the other things we did you know we added this webcam to this Dell computer that was kind of cool but still even this webcam you know this was so early on it didn't it used like a special card and stuff it wasn't like if you had bought this a few years later this would have been USB so as far as games, you know, these computers could run anything the Zeos could run. Um, and I remember one thing that really stood out how fast this computer was compared to that Zeos was installing Doom. So if anyone remembered installing Doom, you know, it didn't fit on just one floppy disk. It would be like five of them. And, and then once you finished running all these disks, uh, loading all these disks onto the computer, it had to like extract them or something. And then the Zeos, it would click like one dot at a time and it took like 30 minutes. And I remember on this Dell... It happened so fast. It was like less than a second, like we missed it. And it was just so cool to see how much faster this computer was than the Zeos. All right, so as far as stuff I did on these computers, you know, it was school. I did a lot of school work with them and I had an internet so I could do internet research. But as far as games, um, some of the great games here that really stood out, probably my favorite one here, this Carmageddon 2. They, the... You know, this was a driving game where it was just like a free-for-all demolition derby, the entire game. And they got, but the physics of, of the game, they got it like completely right. And this game was like, it really can make you a good driver as far as sliding cars and stuff around. Um, I spent so many hours playing this game. Um, other games here, the Caesar 3, that was a lot of fun. This tank game was kind of fun. Um, you know, Carmageddon 1... And Carmageddon 3 were okay, but, but 2 is the game to play. Warcraft 2, that was a great game. A lot of fun playing this online with other people. And with the two computers networked together, we could play, if my friends or something came over, we could play these games, you know, just right in the house without the internet. So that was fun too, having them plugged into each other. So then a bunch of years went by with these computers, and probably the best thing that happened during the life of these computers was when cable internet came out. So with dial-up internet, it, it was so slow, it, it sucked. Like you couldn't really use dial-up internet. And I remember hearing about cable internet pretty early on from one of my friends. And like he's telling me how fast it was and it just sounded unbelievable. And then he was like saying, oh, it's on all the time too. Like with dial-up internet, you had to dial up to it and connect. And then you couldn't use the phone while, while it was happening. And it would disconnect all the time. And with cable, it's just it's just always on. The internet's just always there. And 
I was so excited when that was happening. I remember when the cable guys were out on the streets in, installing the new, they had to install new hardware and, and physically install new wires. And I remember going out there, riding my bike, talking to them. You know, oh, when's this going to be finished? I can't wait till this is done. And then we were like some of the first people to have Time Warner high speed online. And that really changed things because then the internet speed was so fast. You know, it was hundreds of times faster than the dial up. It's fast enough to the point where you could do whatever you want to do online. You could download stuff in seconds, share videos, play games online. Um, then at that time, once that happened, then we got, you know, I learned more about computer networking. Because you couldn't just have the computers plugged into each other. What you had to do is you had your modem and you'd get a router. So the router would plug into the modem and then you'd get a hub or a switch. And then the computers would all, you could plug a bunch of computers into the hub or switch and then, and then go into the router and then into the modem. And then all the computers could share the internet at the same time. So that was just a huge improvement. So the other thing that kind of happened during the life of these computers is that's, I probably kept them a little later and I should have, you know, where, before I got new ones, but that's when I was late in high school and then I started taking some high school trade classes on computer repair and computer networking. So that was cool because that's how I really learned a lot of stuff because we were just in classrooms all the time with like an endless supply of computers just doing stuff to them constantly and with teachers t showing us what to do and it was just a lot of fun to change parts around in these especially when you're getting instructed to so stuff I did to them you know both of these came with Windows 98 I loaded Windows XP on them XP this was a little too slow to run XP especially with 64 megabytes of RAM this one could handle it really with XP you really wanted like 256 RAM and you really wanted like at least uh, 600 megahertz I mean this 450 ran it but and, and then we then I still kind of messing with that Zeos that had Windows 3.1. I remember putting Windows 95 on it, which was a big improvement over 3.1, but it was, that computer couldn't really handle 95. I remember also trying to do internet stuff with the Zeos. It couldn't really handle that either. It kind of could. And we even, my dad even had internet like in the mid early nineties, but it was very different than today's internet. It was like a command based thing. Um, really it was something kind of for nerds, you know, the average person probably wasn't even aware of it or cared about it. And it wasn't something my dad had around for a while, but it was, it did exist. Okay. So then a couple more years went by and then, um, you know, to the point where that e-machines was kind of getting too slow to do some of the stuff I wanted to do. And uh, I got this one. This was my room computer for a while. This here, this was another very cheap computer. I remember being at Walmart with my dad and this was there i got it for christmas one year but comparing the specs so this is a 700 dollars computer and as far as speed wise this was 2000 megahertz compared to 450 from the dell or 433 from the e-machine and the 50 megahertz from the zeos so that was a big speed increase had a bigger hard drive um you know 150 gigabyte hard drive so that was a lot more space 768 RAM. I, I think I added that though. I don't think it came with all that. Um, you know, it came with Windows XP, which Windows XP was a pretty big improvement over 98. XP was great at first, and that's you know when I was in college for computer repair, that's the op that was the newest operating system, so that's what we were using. Um, XP kind of had its flaws though. I mean, one of the jokes was like if you install the computer with XP and you didn't have at least Service Pack 2 on it. Like if you would just plug it into the internet and not even do anything, like it would load itself up with viruses like instantly. It was kind of funny. So like, you know, XP worked, but it wasn't great. Um, so then, so this would have been in 2002. Gee, I guess I had that way too long because then in 2011, I got this. And, um, you know, all the, all the numbers on this were a lot better. Actually, I think I was using a bunch of computers that I had, you know, gotten out of the trash that I had fixed that were maybe a little bit better than this. Um, but this, again, this was like one of the new ones I bought. So for speed-wise, um, you know, so this was 2700 megahertz, but it was like dual core. So I think that's like two processors and more RAM. This came with Windows 7. Windows 7 was a big improvement over XP. And I was using this up until very recently in a lot of my 
videos on my channel, the older ones, were edited on this. And if you're looking to get into video editing, you know, something like this is a computer you can get out of the trash for free. And you can edit 1080p videos on it fine. This was doing fine editing 1080 stuff. The problem is when I started strictly filming in 4K, this could not handle that. It just, I tried, it would sort of do it, but it was always crashing. Just, it wasn't, it wasn't fast enough to handle 4K. And that was with me too, even uh, I upgraded the processor in this. First it had some cheap processor, I put an i5 in it. Then I put a better video card, I filled the RAM up all the way. You know, one game I was playing recently on this was World of Tanks. That was a really fun game, uh, you know, playing online with friends and then you know, you'd have your headsets to talk to each other. I try not to play games. I'm not playing any games now. The problem is the games are so nice. It's too easy to get like addicted to them and spend way too much time playing video games, which are fun, but you're not accomplishing anything. Um, so, you know, even if I was to pick it up again, I'd want to limit how much time I spent doing it. World of Tanks was a lot of fun. You know, what stopped us was we people who were playing it, you know, it was a free game. Um, the, the tanks, me and all my friends were running, it was called T18 and Everyone was complaining, oh, T-18s are too powerful. I'm like, no, dude, they're not. Like, side and back armor was was nothing, but the front armor was uh, invincible to a lot of other tanks. You can really get people mad, like, if you were good at the game and we were in a platoon with, like, a few of my friends, we'd, we'd play as a platoon where we could talk to each other over our headsets, and we'd go out, you know, in our group of three people and, and do pretty well in these battles and really... Sometimes, like in the chat, you could really get people wound up too, which was funny. And uh, they were too, they were complaining about those T18s too much, though. And they finally they made the T18s weaker, and that kind of ruined the game. But um, and, I mean, there, you could you could keep playing it, find other tanks, and people are like, oh, T18s too powerful. I'm like, well, get a T18. It's not that hard of a tank to get. They shouldn't have taken it away. They should have just made the T18 really hard to get or something. Uh, I shouldn't be talking about too much video game stuff, but. Uh, yeah, and so that led me up to the computer I had now, you know, when I was editing in 4K, it's something that's liquid cooled, running solid state hard drives, running Windows 10. You know, again, probably something I spend maybe around three grand on. That's usually what it takes to get a good computer. You know, this, I, I don't remember how much this was, but I don't think this was over like $1,500. I could do more videos. I, I guess if I suggest a video and ask people if they want to see it, everyone's going to say yes. Like the one I was kind of thinking about making was a video on how I edit these videos because I've spent hundreds of hours doing that and I've gotten it down pretty well to, to know how to manage it to the point where you know because I go home do like a job and stuff all day I come home from work you know I'm tired but then I got to edit for hours to get these things out so I really got it down to a system to where I know how to do it where it's not going to be frustrating and you know it's a comfortable work environment so you know, I, I could make a pretty decent video on that. I guess other videos I could crowbar out or like fixing some of these. I mean, this one still works. I tried turning this this on. Up. Hey, let, let's try to turn this on see what happens. Let's resume. All right, I tried this the other day. I'm getting further than I was getting. That monitor, the monitor isn't looking so good here. And I'm like 99% sure I had Windows XP on this thing, so I don't know why it's booting into 98. Actually, that looks like that's turning on. That's cool. Let me, um... The other thing I should mention about this, one of the most other important features that this had, this came with a video capture card. built in at the time you know the the best way to pretty much record stuff when this computer was out was still on vhs tapes with that it was very easy to capture the video from a vhs tape and turn it into a digital file which was then you could share and edit it this computer really was the beginning for being able to edit digital videos for me well it almost sort of works so yeah, for this being a cheap computer, 
you know, it was cool that it had some of those nice features built in, like the, uh, you know, video capture. All right, well, it kind of works, so that's neat. It's better than it not doing anything. You know, I know this one still works, and those two work, but there's nothing interesting about those. I'm sure if I mention it, people are going to want me to do it. It would be probably a pretty fun challenge to try to get that Zeos working again, because I remember breaking that, adding, trying out a hard drive to it when... Probably 1998 when I had this one and like some sparks shot out of it when I turned it on and then it stopped working. And I bet at this point I could fix it. I know parts aren't super available, but it'd be even cooler to take it apart and try to find the uh, parts that failed and solder on, you know, new parts on the board. You know, as far as like the TV and stuff that I watch, you know, I watch some of the other guys that are putting out similar videos to me. Um, the other stuff I'm watching, like the 8-bit guy on YouTube where he gets these really old computers and takes them all apart and, you know, does a great job filming and fixing them. You know, it's just so cool because, you know, because, you know, I remember being a little kid and you see like a circuit board and stuff like this and you kind of think, well, you know, how does that work? And it, and it's just like, well, the answer is magic. It works off of magic, but, <laughs> you know, but it's not really magic. You know, there are people who know what's going on here. And, and watching some of those videos, it kind of makes it look fun to, tr well, fun to try to figure out how to take, to diagnose issues on these and actually solder on new chips and fix circuit boards and build circuit boards and modify circuit boards. So that might be something I'd maybe try to jump into. I, I think on that Zeos, it'd be somewhat doable. I'm sure if I suggest it, everyone's going to say, oh, do it, fix it. All right, over the winter time, if I can't find anything to do, I get that's something that I could do. All right, well, that kind of ends my computer video. I could easily keep talking about these computers for hours, but I know a lot of people on my channel aren't here for computer stuff, but the reason all these videos exist in the first place is because of, of these computers. And... It's just been so cool over my lifetime seeing the improvement the guys who have built these computers have made on them. You know, that from 20 years to, to now. But it's like, you know, these later computers are like thousands of times better or faster than these early computers. Since Christmas is coming up, uh, I got, you know, I still got more shirts, but I just picked up these lady shirts. So these are a V-neck. They're a lot softer, small through large, and I got children's large now. And... And I still have some of these left, so I'll put the link for the eBay listing in the description. This will make a uh, great Christmas present. And for everyone who was asking about this, I this just came in the mail today too, so that's that's pretty cool.